are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cod Loop Podcast, episode 197 of the Cod Loop Podcast. I'm Don Lark at your boy Tank on Twitter, and I'm here to talk to you about maybe the latest in Auburn athletics news because uh, we got a lot of football uh, to talk about the day. As of course, as many of you have already heard, Coy Moore has entered the NCAA transfer portal. He'll be entering as a grad transfer. Uh, Coy Moore was a reserve wide receiver for the Tigers over the past couple of years. Uh, had a lot of hype coming through uh from lsu during his first tenure uh one of the first transfers of the um of the brian harson era so uh good luck to coy moore i know there's been a lot of people who've been hating him uh just publicly so i do wish him the best of luck uh but last year for the tigers he only had three catches for 24 yards and uh his best season he had for the tigers was in 2022 where he had 20 catches for 314 yards and a touchdown uh, so I wish him the best of luck. Uh, he's a very talented guy. That's why LSU and Auburn were both recruiting him. But uh, he is now in the transfer portal. Uh, and then other news for pro, for professional Auburn Tigers. Uh, Elijah McAllister has now earned his minicamp invite for the New York Giants, his home state. Uh, and then also, fun fact, uh, Nick Mardner, the transfer from last season who registered no stats for the year, uh, came out of Cincinnati for Auburn, but also started his career off in Hawaii, uh, where he was a very good receiver for the, for the Rainbow Warriors. He was a very solid backup receiver for the Cincinnati Bearcats, and then never really got to see the field for for Auburn. I, I deal with injuries, and of course, not really being able to to fit in the scheme. But he was actually the second overall pick in this year's Canadian football draft, and then again, in round one, pick two. Uh, for the CFL draft to the Ottawa Red Blacks. Uh, and I, I don't know much about the CFL, but I do wish Nick Marner the best of luck as he continues his professional career in Canada. And then last bit of, and then some recruiting news. Uh, Cause again, this is like a dead period uh, going on. Uh, Auburn has earned a crystal ball for a four-star offensive tackle in Broderick Shoal out of Bixby, Oklahoma. Uh, we've talked about him a few times before on the show. Uh, been a been a guy that Auburn has been looking at for a while. Uh, six foot five, two seventy five, out of again Oklahoma. Uh, just a big big body uh, off of the tackle. I, I think he's going to be he's going to be very good in college just because of the size that he has alone. He's just a bruiser kind of tackle, and he would just add to an already awesome like trench based. Uh, recruiting cycle that Auburn has going on right now for the class of 2025. Uh, and of course, if you look at the, if you look at that, Auburn already has three tackles committed to the Tigers in, in for next year's class, as well as one other interior offensive lineman. So four offensive linemen overall in that class that just keeps getting better and better as the commitments roll in. Auburn currently ranking number ten overall in the country. Have a little bit of a slide uh, from from where they were uh, a couple months ago, but. You can't keep all of them. The commits, they're going to decommit. It's going to happen. Uh, but a lot of these guys, Auburn is still very heavily recruiting. Uh, Malik Autry and Ja'Kayla Falk are constantly being recruited uh, by Hugh Freeze and company, especially because I think Florida is trying really hard to grab both those guys. So, yeah, uh, all, Class 25, I still am very high on. I do think it's going to finish in the top five. I, I wholeheartedly agree uh, that that will happen. But with that, that is my uh, that is that is the bet the uh, words are hard that is the uh entirety of the football news i wanted to do a list of my top five most impactful transfers going into this upcoming year uh we i don't think we've done a full list about this especially because i think auburn's transfer portal uh recruiting is kind of slowing down a little bit i don't know how many other players auburn's gonna be trying to go after maybe some uh, just depth pieces at this point uh, but I have my list, and of course, on Sunday, I'm going to be giving my updated depth chart with the newly added players post spring. So stay tuned for that on the Sunday live stream. Uh, but starting off number five, I have Philip Bleedy. I did actually find out how to actually say his last name. Thank you, Ike Jones from the War Report, uh, for informing me on how to say his last name. But yeah, Philip Bleedy, the Indiana Hoosier. 
uh, he's he's coming in. I I think we're looking at a guy who's going to be right next to Jason Jones on, on the on the defensive line. Uh, and of course, you brought in Isaiah Rakes. You brought in uh, Gage Keys and Trill Carter. Uh, I think Philip Bleedy is is the best of both worlds uh, for every single defensive lineman you got. I think you got a true defensive tackle uh, to to pair up with Jason Jones as nose tackle. Uh, cause you're looking at the defense, the defense line is slowly be starting to become Auburn's like most like what's, what's I'm looking for her? underrated position group. I, I think that people kind of saw the Marcus Harris departure to the NFL and, and kind of saw how that could affect the defensive line going forward. Uh, but I think Philip Bleed is going to give you the kind of production out of Marcus that we saw out of Marcus Harris, maybe not as much cause Marcus Harris is just a freak of nature, but Philip Bleedy has the opportunity to do that as well. So I'm very interested to see where Philip Bleedy, uh, how he competes in the SEC this year. I, I do think that he is going to be a stud. And that's why I have my number five spot uh, for my top five impactful transfers. Coming at number four, I have Robert Lewis, the wide receiver out of Georgia State. Uh, I, I think what we, we saw the best of him in A Day. And of course, if you go back and watch the film, he is a fast as mess wide receiver and he's a lot bigger than he gets credit for uh and because people kind of assume when they saw robert lewis a, a like a like a normal like slot receiver no size to him uh just a fast guy you want to run across the middle of the field that's not that robert lewis could end up being an outside receiver for the tigers this year uh if not for a couple other guys that auburn has coming uh coming in uh for the 2024 season uh, but yeah, Robert Lewis, my number four guy. I, I think it's going to be a nice uh, receiver to kind of pair up alongside Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson uh, to kind of take some heat off of them. Because, of course, if you double-team Cam Coleman, oh, this wide receiver room is still very, very talented. I, I think, again, this is the most talented wide receiver room Auburn fans have seen in a hot minute. Uh, and, of course, it's going off potential alone. Uh, but from just what I've seen so far, what I've seen from the practice and what I've heard, um, I'm just very excited to see how this wide receiver room pans out. But yeah, Robert Lewis, my number four guy. Excuse me, I had a cough. Uh, coming in at number three, I have Percy Lewis. Auburn got a SEC caliber offensive lineman and Percy Lewis, who is a ginormous human being. He, I, honestly, I would not be opposed to him maybe losing a little bit of that weight going forward. Uh, because he is a massive, massive, massive individual. He's six foot seven, three hundred and fifty-five pounds. So he's gonna be starting at Auburn's left tackle position. I think if he lost about 20, 30 ish pounds over over the summer, it, it, which is a lot to ask for, I, I think it would uh greatly benefit what Auburn wants to do offensively in the RPO scheme. I still think Bertrand Lewis can be a great offensive lineman for the Tigers. I, I think it's uh, nice to have a veteran, all SEC caliber offensive lineman added to a offensive line from last year that was very wishy washy in how they performed on the field. And of course, you have Connor Lou, who's just been the absolute like maybe with the best player out of the class of twenty twenty four thus uh, class twenty twenty three uh, that we've seen thus far. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how Percy Lewis kind of pairs up with the rest of the O-line. Because <laughs> Percy Lewis, to me, I kind of called him a tall guard. Uh, not in the basketball sense, but the the since he's so t like wide and six foot seven, uh, it kind of fits the guard mold, but he's going to be playing Auburn at the left tackle position guarding Peyton Thorne's blind side. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how he performs. Uh, I, and again, I do wish he would lose maybe a couple of pounds. Uh, he, he is a very large individual. And my number two guy, I have Jaron Thompson coming in at the free safety position, going to be taking over from where Jalen Simpson left off. And we saw the best, we saw a really good version of Jaron Thompson during A Day. We saw a guy who could help Auburn not skip a beat from the safety position. And looking at it, he, he did win eight a day defensive player of the of of the game. Uh, I, I think he's going to be one of the leaders of this defense right off the bat. And you typically don't see that right away from transfers. Uh, of course, you did get it from like Elijah McAllister last year, who came in with a transfer and became a captain. I think Peyton Thorne also became a captain as a transfer. So, uh, watching Jared Thompson, I would not be surprised if he got a captain uh, patch on this year. Uh, he, he's just a uh, all out 
the great safety that Auburn is used to having. I, I don't know if he if he repl- repeats the season that Jalen Simpson had. It's be, it'd be very hard for anybody to go in and kind of replicate what we saw from Jalen Simpson last year. Uh, but it's gonna be a it's gonna be awesome to watch Auburn not be able to skip a beat in the secondary uh, going forward. And of course, that kind of relies mostly on Kyan Lee and Keontae Scott kind of uh, holding true to what they. Uh, the, what they how they played last year, uh, but yeah, Jaron Thompson, clear cut, my number two guy going forward, and then my number one guy Auburn got from the transfer portal, who I think is going to be the most impactful individual that Auburn signed from the portal, is Keandre Lambert Smith. Uh, watching the film on, on Keandre, uh, he is just the best wide receiver Auburn could have gotten from the portal. I think he just fits the scheme so well. He's a route runner. He's got great hands. He has size to him. He's fast. He is the perfect receiver to pair alongside on the other side of the field of Cam Coleman because you're not going to be able to focus on one or the other uh, at the same time. You've got to focus on Cam Coleman. If Cam Coleman is performing well, you got to focus on Cam Coleman, but then that leaves room for Keandre to step up and get get a lot of yards. And if Keandre starts going good, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna have to give up on Cam Coleman. No. So watching the the film, I, and I, I've said this multiple times, I think that of all the transfers, Keandre Lambert Smith is the most likely to earn Auburn one more win on their win on on their total going into twenty twenty four, because that's just the level of talent that he adds. And and watching seeing Peyton Thorne improve uh, over over the course of spring, watching him finally make reads. You're going to see that a lot from him, especially now that he has a very talented wide receiver room around him. And, and of course, everyone's been saying he has no excuses, and of course he doesn't. Uh, and no, I don't think any quarterback with this wide receiver room would have would be able to have excuses given uh, for for underperforming. So don't even don't be trying to make it a Peyton Thorne thing. Every receiver would be judged if they could not perform with this wide receiver room. Because it just Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson coming in, and Malcolm Malcolm Simmons, and Bryce Kane, and Sam Jackson the fifth, Robert Lewis, uh, just goes on and on and on. Of course, Auburn's lost a few guys, and Jay Fair, uh, who who would be a contributor, but then you have like guys like Kenan Brown who've stayed. It's just going to be such a fun and nice change of pace watching the wide receivers finally be a contributing member of the offense. Because it's been a hot minute since we've been able to really see uh, the progression of that going forward, and of course, and of course, can't forget Auburn has a very nice slew of of tight ends, uh, and Rivaldo Fairweather, and Rico Walker, Luke Deals back for his 18th year of eligibility. So watching all these pass catchers, a kind of mold and develop into this Auburn scheme, has has just been awesome to watch happen, and of course, that just goes into my. Condre Leverett Smith and Robert Lewis, two wide receivers, all my top five most impactful transfer portal transfer additions list. Those are my two starting wide receivers. Uh, and of course, wide receiver two and wide receiver like in the slot for Robert Lewis. Uh, because that's just the how how great of additions those two have been to the roster. And of course, we haven't seen Condre play with the team yet. Uh, he's got summer, he's got the fall camps to really prove himself that much more. But just off of film alone and off of what I've been hearing, he he is like the guy uh, for Auburn. And he's even said that. He said that he he is uh, he chose Auburn because he, he thinks that that wide receiver room needs some veteran leadership and veteran leadership that he can add, uh, especially as a key contributor to the offense. So going to be a lot of fun to watch Keandre play uh, going forward. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch all these guys play in August, I believe the end of August, August 31st, I believe is the first game. Uh, I know last year it was September 2nd, so just going to check my mouth. Yep, August 31st against Alabama A&M. So going to be a lot of fun to watch this team play this year. So uh, before we move on going forward uh, to Diamond Sports and, of course, shouting out golf for uh, their postseason bids. Uh, I want to go and let y'all know, if y'all are watching the show right now, thank y'all for tuning in live. And of course, you're listening in. Thank you for listening to The College Loop. I just want to let y'all know, if you are loving the show, if you like the show, you like the new uh, thumbnail again, 
Uh, go ahead, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Leave your top five Auburn transfer portal additions and who you think is going to be the most impactful for the 2024 season. And, of course, looking forward, uh, who's going to be your top five most impact- impactful players overall? Uh, just go ahead and add all of that. And, of course, don't forget, if you've already liked, if you already commented, already subscribed, there's other ways you can support the show as well. Also, follow us on social medias. Uh, you could also go to the warport.com and get your very own college loop feeling loopy t shirt for only $25. Comes in five different colorways, most comfortable shirt you were ever going to wear in your entire life. And of course, don't forget that I have not made the graphic yet. I'm working on it, working on it. Uh, we do have a hat up on the Warport as on the Warport shop as well. The College Loop hat. It's got the College Loop logo right in the middle with the nice little podcast network logo on the side. It's beautiful. It comes in four colorways. It's in black, pink, khaki, and navy. And believe me, as soon as it went up, it was already in my cart. And I know that's is my logo, but if it wasn't if it wasn't my podcast, I would still buy the hat. And as should you. And of course, if you get any of our merch, put it up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the works, all of those. Uh, and you just hashtag feeling loopy. And don't forget to tag us as well, just to make sure that we do see it. And whenever we do, I will shout you out on the College Loop for being so awesome and getting our merch and supporting the show in ways outside of just subscribing. When we believe me, if you just subscribe, I, I support that as well. So uh, just leave a like and comment and subscribe below. Uh, and then moving on to Auburn baseball. They are playing Ole Miss this Friday through Sunday in beautiful Plainsman Park in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, on the year so far, if you've not been paying attention, Auburn is currently 21 and 22 on the year, 3 and 18 in the SEC. And Ole Miss has kind of underperformed this year, 23 and 21, not far not the only like a two game lead on Auburn, uh, seven and 14 in the conference. Uh, Ole Miss is underperformed this year and watch looking at the stats. Uh, they are very similar to Auburn and it's, it, and it's like scary similar, but they have won more games than Auburn has in the sec. And of course, I don't think the pitching is like that much different. I, I think that Ole Miss holds a slight advantage over Auburn in the pitching department, uh, because you're, uh, just because of what we've seen from Auburn this year, and it's been very disappointing to watch how the how the season has kind of like turned. Uh, but Auburn did end the LSU series with a win, uh, and they played it close in the game too, uh, losing in the at the end of the game, and then uh, got the win over LSU on on Sunday. I have been back and forth on this series. Uh, I think this does rely heavily on Auburn's pitching staff, actually like stepping up to the plate or stepping up to the mount, stepping onto the mount, uh, whichever analogy you want to use there. Uh, and, and actually shutting down runs. Uh, that, that has been a thing that uh, Auburn has struggled with all year. I mean, there's been a lot of games Auburn has led and then all of a sudden it just falls apart. Uh, and that's going to come down to the pitching staff. Uh, it, it is time to finally like wake up. Uh, and it, it, hopefully it's not too late. I mean, you got nine more conference games left uh, and you got the Ole Miss series and you have Georgia Tech next week. Uh, and then you have Missouri the following weekend or that the next weekend, Sanford that midweek, and then Alabama to round out the regular season. And then, of course, you have the SEC, SEC tournament and Hoover. Hoover, of course, being Auburn's kryptonite. I think with it being on Plainsman Park and, and Auburn really needing like a series win like that bad, because if I'm not mistaken, I, I think it's I don't know if Auburn has won a an SEC series all year, and of course that kind of comes with the the record of three and eighteen, but they have not. I don't know. I'm not even going to go check. Uh, it it's it seems like it's time for Auburn to get one, and I think they do that against a underperforming Ole Miss team. Uh, it, that's just kind of where my head at is right now. I think Ole Miss has been, I don't know what has happened. The fall off from, from grace that Ole Miss had over the past few years has been uh, shocking to say the least as, as well as Auburn's. Uh, but Auburn has a clear fix to theirs. Uh, fixing the pitching would be like the one and there's not really a two. Uh, but I, I think Auburn gets the series win against Ole Miss, and I know that's kind of maybe bugging a little bit for me picking Auburn to win an SEC series this year, but I, I'm really hyped up to see how they perform this weekend. 
uh, because they have Ole Miss, they have Missouri, which I think are two very winnable series. And then, of course, they have Alabama, which I think is go either way. Uh, but, yeah, I have Auburn winning this weekend series against Ole Miss. And then moving on to the other side of the diamond, Auburn softball is rounding out their SEC regular or their regular season, just in general, with Alabama uh, for senior weekend. And, of course, Maddie Penta Day on Saturday. Um, what looking at the record, uh, Alabama currently 32 and 14 Auburn, not that 25, 17 and one Auburn still fighting for a spot in a regional, uh, won't be hosting it. Of course, uh, that's kind of just how this things are gone. But some, I, I would, if you had told me like a month ago that Auburn was going to a regional, I would have been just absolutely shocked, uh, and like, but maybe laughed at you. Uh, but it, it. Could very well still happen. Uh, it kind of depends how the season goes, but I, I do think Auburn is still like maybe locked in for a spot. Actually, uh, it, it's it's just it's wacky. Uh, but yeah, Alabama thirty-two and fourteen. Alabama also on the year. Uh, not really a great team on the plate. Uh, batting wise, I mean they only have thirty-seven home runs. They're as a team, they're batting a two-five-seven. Uh, it's just kind of been off and on. Auburn, I mean, hasn't been much better. Uh, batting a two five, or not better at all, but batting a two five two, uh, with I believe thirty eight home runs. Uh, they are finding a rhythm, and of course, uh, they struggled last this past the last weekend against Ole Miss, which hopefully isn't like bearing some bad news. Uh, I don't think Auburn is going to win this series, which sucks because it's Matty Penta's last like home series for the Tigers, of course, until the SEC tournament next weekend or, or next week. Um, it, it's just a c- accumulation of the fact that I, I think Auburn lacks the consistency at the plate to get to like further along and get like higher regional uh, seeds or uh, just, it, it's just been a up and down season. It's been so weird watching Auburn softball this year because They've either had like had really good games and they had like an awesome series and then they would just fall off for a couple of weeks. But I I I do think Auburn gets a win. If I had to pick one, I would just pick the Maddie Penta day. Uh, I think that's like the best win Auburn could get, especially going forward. Uh, but right now, I, I I don't think Auburn wins this series. Uh, but they do if they win Saturday. I do feel very uh. I, I feel more, what's what I'm looking for, a confidence in Auburn in the SEC tournament, at least for the first day of, of the tournament. I just think that Auburn has the potential to do some damage in the SEC tournament, but I don't know how likely it is for that to happen. Uh, so I'll be very interested to see uh, going forward because we're going to have a full breakdown of that on the Tuesday show, uh, previewing Auburn's opponent, whoever it may be. Uh, in the SEC tournament. But yeah, I, I think Auburn's going to win one game out, out of that series. But yeah, uh, so that does it for Diamond Sports. Uh, again, this has been a very dead period thus far. Uh, sports, uh, I don't think we've had very much breaking news uh, for this weekend. Uh, I, I think the biggest news was, in fact, <laughs> all, uh, Coymore uh, entering the portal. That was about as... Uh, as Big as news as it got, but Auburn men's golf did in fact clinch a regional. No surprise there for the SEC champion uh, Auburn Tigers, but they are going to be going to Baton Rouge next week on May 13th. I guess that's not really next week. Yeah, it's next week. Two weeks. About two weeks uh, ish. A uh, week and a half. I'll go a week and a half. In a week and a half, Auburn will be going to the regionals in Baton Rouge. Opponents yet to be determined, uh, but I like Auburn's chances a lot. Uh, if I if I had to pick like who I think is going to be is going to win the national championship in golf this year, I, I would biasly pick Auburn, but I would also unbiasedly pick Auburn. That's just kind of where I am right now. Uh, Jackson Coy is an individual champion uh, in the SEC. He he is just an absolute dog, uh, and Auburn is just so freaking good at golf. It is crazy to me just how great they've been all year and, and of course they just tore through the sec tore through all their invitationals and individual and classics and a- every single 
type of tournament Auburn went in. They just absolutely tore it up. Uh, so it's been it's been fun. It has been a fun thing to kind of keep up with. Uh, and again, I just I like Auburn's chances of winning the national championship in golf. So uh, huge shout out to them. I'm gonna have a full breakdown of who they're playing in. I guess on the next on the two Sundays from now, uh, or yeah, two Sundays from now, a full breakdown of their opponents and who they're going to be playing. And with that, that'll end it for this episode of the College Loop Podcast. Of course, I'm Don Learn at Able Tank on Twitter. And of course, if you have anything you would like me to talk about, leave it in the comments below. And of course, uh, don't forget Sunday we are going to be doing a full depth chart. Uh, pro- I might do a one and ones and twos potentially. Uh, but for just right now, it is the depth chart on the Sunday show, uh, barring any kind of news that might come up. Uh, so with that, I again, I am Dylan Lark. Uh, but this has been the College of the Podcast. Make sure to follow us everywhere on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, the works, all of those at the college loop. And of course, leave a like comment and subscribe again, leave your thoughts for your top five most impactful transfers for the Auburn Tigers in 2024. And of course, don't forget to again, follow us on social media, uh, but follow us on the light on our audio shows as well on Spotify podcast, Google podcasts, and of course, Amazon music. And of course, again, with all that being said, I know I say, of course, a lot, uh, with that being said, this has been the college loop podcast.